Velina, everyone, thank you for coming tonight, uh, making making your evening uh, filled with a wonderful presentation about using deeds in Hawaiian genealogy. Our guest speaker today is Tyler McCain. He was born in Wisconsin, but he now lives in Illinois. Correct, Tyler? Mm -hmm. um, his genealogy journey started 13 years ago, and it has not stopped since. And he's recently been tracking his uh, paternal Hawaiian grandmother's genealogy. Um, he's obtaining his degree currently in library and information sciences, library and information services at Chippewa Valley Technical College, and hopes to get his genealogy accreditation in the next few years um, to work professionally in the genealogy field. So um, welcome, Tyler. My housekeeping oh. for tonight is super fast. Um, if you guys have questions, put them in the Q&A. If you guys have comments, put them in the chat. In the chat, only me and the other hosts and panelists and presenters can read what you put in the chat, not everybody. So it's just between you and us in the chat. That's the perfect place for comments. But if you have any questions, please move them over to the Q&A tonight. I will circle back during the Q&A and um, update you guys about this program and all those things. One last thing. Mahalo to Kavena Komeji and Michiko Josephs for being with us tonight. They're going to be uh, helping tonight, monitor the Q&A, monitoring the chat, making sure that everyone's putting things in the proper place and um, so that our speaker can be free to do his presentation and not have to worry about that until the end. And we are going to turn our cameras and our mics off for now, and we're going to hand it over to Tyler. Okay, well, mahalo. Kylie, for that introduction. I'm so excited tonight to do this presentation. Um, if you haven't used these before, um, these contain so much information that, um, especially in Hawaiian deeds, there's a lot of familial relationships. So tonight, I just want to give you a pretty much an overview on what kind of records relating to deeds are out there. So we're going to start talking with the um, the Mahele documents, we're going to start with that, and then I'm going to show you the process of how a claimant um, gets Kuliana, Kuliana land. And then we're going to talk about the family search deeds, um, so private, private land sales. And then um, I'm just going to show you some examples of deeds. So with all that said, let's just go ahead and dive into our presentation tonight. So why do we want to use deeds for genealogy? So deeds tie our ancestors to a time and place. And especially with Hawaiian genealogy research, we don't have too many records, right? So there's not a ton of records, especially before like 1900, there isn't too many records. And deeds might be one of the only records that we find our ancestors on. Um, the neighbors and witnesses on those deed records can also give us clues to relationships. A lot of times the witnesses to those deeds are family members, some of the neighbors may be family members. So it's important to have another document that can give us clues to other family members. And at the very least, those, peoples are, those people are at least friends. And then as I stated before, Hawaiian deeds contain a lot of familial relationships, more so than I've seen on mainland deed research. So oftentimes what you see are um, a person who owns a land and they, and they have died and their, inherit, their, their heirs have inherited their land. And when those heirs sell that land, they often refer to that, I got this land from my grandfather and they'll name their grandfathers. So that's just one example of um, how familial relationships are found in Hawaiian deeds. So before we get into the deed records themselves, let's just talk about um, land ownership in Hawaii. So prior to the Great Mahele in 1848, which is also known as the Great Land Division, all of the land in the Hawaiian Islands were owned by the king and his family. Um, so there wasn't any private land ownership among the commoners. Um, it wasn't until Western ideas, until we have people immigrating to Hawaii, um, it wasn't until then, until they brought the idea of private land ownership. So those ideas sort of started in 1778 when Captain Cook arrives to Hawaii. And then later on, when you get the Mormon missionaries um, and businessmen that arrived to Hawaii, that's when the, the idea of private land ownership started turning in their, in their minds. 
Let's talk a little bit about land division. So the Land Commission was created in 1845 by Kamehameha III. And he, in 1848, um, divided all of the land in Hawaii into three separate divisions. So one third of the land was set aside as crown lands. And those land, that land would be set aside for the king and his family and, and the monarchy. The second third are government lands, and these this portion of land could later be sold um, to anybody for private use, and that would benefit the king and his family. And then the last third are the Konohiki lands, and that is the lands that um, the Kuleana lands came from. So these this set of land was set aside for the people of Hawaii that worked on and lived and farm that land. So let's talk about that third, um, the last set of the third, which is obtaining the Kuleana land. So this is just a broad overview of the steps that a uh, person would take to obtain the land that they lived on. So step one would be the person would make a claim to that land. So those are gonna be known as native or foreign registers. So it's basically, um, a petition to the land commission uh, where a person says, I've lived on this land for X amount of years. And this is basically their application to obtain um, title to that land. The second step is that um, they needed two witnesses to testify the validity of the claim. And these are known as foreign or native testimonies. So um, for every application, the claimant had to have two people testify that what they're saying is true, that yes, they have, this person has lived on this land for X amount of years and um, everything they are stating is true. The third step is the Atlantic Commission Award is granted for fee simple title. And then the last step is a royal patent is issued and this would relinquish any and all interests of the government to that land and issue title to that claimant. So then he could sell that land or his heirs could inherit that land. So let's dive deeper into each of these steps. So step one is person makes a claim. So uh, the land commissioners would come out to all of the areas in Hawaii and basically take down their testimony. Um, so this example, we're gonna follow the example of my fifth great grandfather, Kukahi Kahe. And this is an example of what a claim would look like. And basically it's going to describe um, when he got that land, who he got it from, and also it can describe um, how much land it is, where it's located. Um, this is a joint, this one is a joint um, application. So you can see Kukahi Kahe in Kamalolo. Uh, further research showed that Kamalolo was his wife. And then at the bottom here, there's also a few other names. So Nakeki, Kapupulanui, and Kaho Ohanohano. And later research showed that those were three of his children. So that's why viewing these claimants and uh, claims and reading through all of them, it, all these extra names give you ideas and possibilities for other family members. Okay, so step two is obtain testimony of two witnesses. So this is an example of what that um, document looks like. And I've have it, I have it transcribed here on, and I'm just gonna read it for you. So, Number 4230, Kukahikahe, 13 September, 1848. And then these are the two uh, witnesses that Kukahikahe has testifying on his behalf. So we got Kua Lihelihe has sworn and stated, I have seen it in the Ili land of Pu'ukapu in Waimea, Hawaii, in four sections. Kainea had given him his interest at the time of Keopuolani. No one has objected to this day. The second witness was Ula Nui, sworn and stated, I have known exactly as Kua Lihelihe has just stated. So from this document, we learned that Kukahikahe 
um, has uh, obtained this land located in Pukapu, and he has had it since the time of Keopulami. Step three, land commission award granted. Here's an example of a land commission award. So hello 4230. And you can see that this is basically the survey of the land. This is the legal description of the land. At the bottom there, you can see um, the survey of that land. And you can see that Kukahikahi has two parcels of land. So whenever you're seeing apana, so you see one apana and then two, that means he has two parcels of land. So keep an eye out for that. They could have more than one piece of land per um, claim application. Step four, the final step, is that the royal patent was issued. This relinquished the government's interest in the land and allowed for a claimant to do as they wished with this land. They could sell it, they could um, have their um, heirs inherit it, and they could mortgage it out or lease it. Um, when you're viewing all of these records, make sure you're always making note of the royal patent numbers and the LCA award numbers, because when we go to look at the deeds where they sell these lands, often though they always will refer to the original owner of that piece of land and they will refer to them with these royal patent and LCA numbers. And so you're going to need to correlate that so that you know you have the right person. So this is the example of the royal patent. Um, this just basically tells you, again, there's a legal description, how many acres, and where that land is located. Then we also have the government land grants. So remember that other third that was set aside for government lands? So the, the Crown would sell parts these parcels of lands, and anybody could purchase a land grant. You didn't have to go through the Kuleana process to obtain that. Um, and then I have an example of Kukahikahi. He also purchased a land grant. So this is land grant 921. And you can see that he has purchased 17 and 75th 100th acres of land. Um, <clears throat> and he paid $17.75 for that land. So where are we gonna find all of these documents? Uh, my favorite, there's a few places, but my favorite website to use is Kapuka Database. It's located at kapukadatabase.com. And here is a screenshot of what that website looks like. So you can see that we have, um, at the top here is where you can search. So if you don't know for sure if your ancestor had, um, Kuliana land, you can search their name here. Or you can, if you already know their number of the LCA or the Royal Patent number, you can search the numbers in there as well and you'll also get results. So I just typed in Kukahi Kahe and he has three results. So on the right side, you can see under the tab that says land awards, those three results show up. And the first two, you can see the Helu is 4230. So those two are each of the parcel. So remember he had two parcels of land for that one um, Kuliana land application. And then that third one down there is that government land grant, 921. This is just a more zoomed in version of that. So the really cool thing about Kipuka database is that they also have mapped out all of these parcels. So it's really cool to see where exactly that piece of land was. So when you click on it, it's just going to give you, uh, it's going to highlight that parcel of land for you. So to actually go in and view the documents that are held within each of these records, you just want to click that middle um, icon there where there's a globe and then a magnifying glass. Once you click that, it brings you to this page. And this is where all of the records that we are interested in are going to be located. So at the top here, we just have a more zoomed in version of where that parcel was. Now remember if your Kapuna had more than one parcel, depending on which one you click on, it's going to zoom in on that. So this is just one of the two parcels he had. 
So you'll have to go back to that other parcel and click on that one to see where that one was located. Um, but you're going to see a few different tabs here. So we have the location of the land, the description, um, if there's any historical sites on there. But really the one that we're going to be interested for this purpose is links to other documents. And um, they have been so kind as to label each kind of document. So you can see the Land Commission Award, the Native Register, Native Register Continued. Um, where it says continued, that just means there's more than one page. So each of these, if you click on them, they will open up um, into a PDF document. Okay, so what about translations? I can't read Hawaiian. Um, I wish I could, that would make my life so much easier. But um, there are a few options that you have if you cannot read the um, Hawaiian and you need translations. So there's Avakonahiki, um, which is just located at avakonahiki.weebly.com. Uh, what they have translated is the, the testimony. So the, the LCA um, record, like the um, claimant application, that's not transcribed. Only the translation of the testimonies are on that site. But that is the free website. And then we have vaihona.com, um, which has the transcriptions of the entire documents. Um, but that one does cost money. I believe it's $32 per document. Um, but if you want the full transcription of the whole entire file, that's where you can find it. So let's talk about Avakonahiki. <clears throat> so the easiest way for me to find these translations on this website is to click on expert mode. You can click on new and that will have a more detailed list of um, the instructions. But for me, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like on expert mode. So to get to the testimony translation search page, you're just gonna click on expert then on the top right, you're gonna hover over LCA index and search, then click LCA advanced search. Then you're gonna click on browse, search for name or LCA slash RP number. So there's gonna be a search box and I'm gonna show you this in the next slide what it looks like. Then you're gonna check on the left side where there's filters, check Avakonihiki FTNT, which is the foreign testimonies and native testimonies on the collections filter and uncheck land commission awards. And then you're gonna click, click update and then search. So here's an example of what the Avakoniki site looks like. So on the top right there, that's where you're gonna do your searching. Um, you can search by name or you can search by the Royal Patent or LCA number. Both, um, all three of those will come up with results. So I've just searched Kukahe Kahe. And on the left side under collections, that's where we have the filters. So um, this site also has the land commission awards. So the same records that we found in Avakonahiki, or I'm sorry, on Kapuka database, they have them here. They're just not translated. So just to make the search results more easier, I uncheck that because I don't need them. And then I will have to check on Avakonahiki FTNT, check that box, then click update. So what you get, um, and the search results are the foreign testimony and native testimony translations. Um, if you're searching by name, you're gonna get any time that your Kapuna was listed. So whether he was listed on his um, application or if he's listed as a witness to somebody else's application. And that's important because we always wanna check out those other people. If your kapuna is serving as a witness, we wanna investigate those people because they could be related or at very least neighbors or friends. So um, this first search result is the one we're gonna look at. And you can see that it says index and then transcriptions. So that's how you know that this is a typed transcription. So once we click on that, here is what the, the transcription looks like. So you have um, Kua Lihe Lihe sworn and stated, I have seen it in the Ili land of Pu'ukapu in Waimea, Hawaii in four sections. And then he goes and describes the four sections. So Kukahikahi has a house lot, he has a tarot patch, he also has two crops and then another crop. 
And then he notes that Kainea had given him his interest at the time of Keopulani, and no one has objected to this day. So here are some search tips for Avakonahiki. Um, if you aren't finding your kupuna by name, try searching the LCA number. Sometimes that will help for it to come up. Um, always make note of where your kapuna are testifying for another person's application because that does give clues and they could be related. And then make sure to save the image and don't forget to cite your source. So this is an example of the Laihona page. This is the one, the uh, website where you can pay to have the full translations. Um, so on the top right is where you're going to search. And again, you can search either by name or you can search by LCA or Royal Patent number. So I've searched here for Kukahe Kahe and it brings up several different results. The third result here is Kukahe Kahe's, um, his application, his grant. And all these other ones are where he's mentioned. He's either mentioned as a neighbor or he's mentioned as a witness to someone else's claim. Um, the icons on the right side, so you can view a preview. It's not going to show you the entire document, but you can see a preview of the translation there if you just hit the magnifying glass. So this is an example of what that looks like. So this just gives you enough information to know if this is the right document you're looking for. Um, and then if you do decide to purchase it, you just click down Add to Document Tray and that will take you to the checkout page. And like I said, I believe that's $32 for the record. Okay, now let's get to the meat of what we're talking about tonight, which are the deeds on FamilySearch. So these are gonna be found on familysearch.org. Um, hopefully you've used that website before, but if you haven't, um, I'm glad this is your first introduction to it. Um, it's a free website. All that really requires is a username, an email, and a password. You do not have to be a member of the LDS Church to have an account. So these, these are the records of sale of land from one person or entity to another. So these are the private land sales. And these cover the years 1844 to 1900. And that's important because if you're looking for any deeds after 1900, you are gonna to have to contact the Bureau of Conveyances to get a copy of that. And I haven't had to order one from them, but I believe they charge maybe 20 or $30 for a deed. If you're um, requesting it, um, if you can't go in the office yourself. And then if you do go inside, I believe it's just a few dollars. But um, so the family search deeds, they're, they're, they have an index, and then that index is also indexed, and that's what we're searching. So the deed, the original deeds themselves are not indexed, but I'm going to show you how you can go from the index to the original deeds, and we always want to view the originals. Okay, so here is how we get to these records. So you're going to go to familysearch.org slash search slash catalog. And this brings you to the Family Search catalog. Under where it says place, just type in Hawaii and click on, it'll, there's going to be a list, just click on United States Hawaii. And then just to narrow down the search results a little bit more, you can click on online. If you click on any, it's going to show you records that aren't available from your home. Um, there's some records that are only available from, or if you're sitting at a family search library or an affiliate library. But luckily for us, all of the records that we need are free and open available to view from home. So this is the list you're going to get. You're going to get, um, <clears throat> all these up here are the different categories of records. Family search has tons of records, not just deeds. The ones we're interested in are, under United States Hawaii land and property. So you're gonna click that and it's gonna drop down a list of other records. And we want the ones that say deeds and other records, 1844 to 1900. This is what that page looks like. And we are gonna be interested in the index. Now you're gonna notice that there's two different indexes here. 
This first one that says Registrar of Bureau of Conveyances. So there are a few of those deed books that I talked about that are indexed, but the bulk majority of them are not. So the few books that are indexed, you can search those, those using the first link. Um, but like I said, the bulk of them are not indexed. So we want the second one that says Hawaii Grantor and Grantee Index. Um, uh, just a search, uh, search tip, um, go ahead and right click and open that in a new tab. So once we search the index, it's going to give us a book and page number. And this is the page where the the books are located. So you're gonna to have to flip between the two and it's just really easy if you just open the index on a separate page. So then you can come back to this page and view the books. Okay, this is the search um, page. And I always read the database descriptions because they are gonna give me an overview of what's what are in these records. So I'll just read it to you. It just says index of land grantor and grantee records for the islands of Oahu, Hawaii, Kauai, and Maui in the state of Hawaii from 1845 to 1909. Microfilm of the original records in the Department of Land and Natural Resources and Honolulu, Hawaii. And the text is, of this collection is in English and Hawaiian. Okay, so I want to find Kukahikahe. Now, there's one thing that I've noticed with family searches search. You have to have something inputted into the last name field. So a lot of our kapuna, but they didn't really have last names right before about the 1860s. So Kukahikahe is only known as Kukahikahe. That's his name. So I want to search Kukahikahe with his name in the first name field. And then in that last name field, um, you can just put an underscore or a dash, and that will allow you to search it. If you try to do it without, if you just leave the last name field blank, it's not going to let you search. Um, so once I do this search, I also, the other tip is to put uh, your Kapuna's name in the last name field and just leave the first name field blank because you're going to get different results. It's just, it's just, it just matters how they indexed it. So some of them are indexed in the first name field, some are indexed in the last name field. So do two searches, one with the name and the first name, and then another one in the last name field. So I'm searching for Kukai Kahe. And this is the search result page. So we have all the records that he is listed on. And you can see um, that the dates are listed here in the middle here. These are when the deed was recorded. So I'm interested in this first one. So I'm just gonna right click and open into your tab. <clears throat> before I show you what, uh, before I show you an example of the index, let's just talk a little bit about what is included in this index. So they have the kind of interest instrument. So that's either a deed, if it's a lease, mortgage, foreclosures, adoption. Yes, adoptions are listed in deed records, not all adoptions but the ones that are recorded are listed in the deed books. Very important. Um, then there's the grantor. So that's the person selling the land or leasing it. Um, the grantee, the person who is purchasing it, the date of instrument. So that's the date of the sale. That's when the sale occurred. The book and page number, that's the most important information we need to know. So that's where the, the deed is recorded in the deed books. Then you have the date of record, which is when it was recorded at the deed of the deed office. That's when it was recorded. Sometimes deeds are recorded a few years later. Sometimes they're recorded a few days later. Then there's a field for the number of award, royal patent, or grant. And it also gives the number of interests. And I'll show you an example of what I mean by interest. Most of the time when you see interests, those are the number of heirs. So I'll show you where, I'll show you an example of that in just a second. And then you have the last field, which is the location of the land. So let's pull up Kukahikahe's um, deeds. So you can see, let's just look at the first one here. <clears throat> D, it just stands for deed. Um, and then you see that the grantor is an heir of the mortgagee, 
and they are selling the land to Pacific Sugar Mill. And then you just have the date of the sale. And then the book and page number. So the one that I want to show you guys tonight is this one where it's in book 155, page 188. And then it just says one eighth interest in raw patents 930 and 921. And then it shows you where that land is located. So let's take a deeper look into this deed record. Why do we want to view the original record? So indexes are created just as a finding aid. They do not contain all of the information. Um, nine times out of 10, there is always more information in the original record than in an index. Um, also indexes can have errors in them. So an index is just somebody's interpretation of a word or a number. And sometimes that can be wrong in the index. And okay, so I needed book 154, page 188. So remember that original page we were at? And then I told you to open that other page into a new tab. So now that we found what book and page we need to go to, we need to flip back to that original page where it has all the books. So I'm going to find the book that contains book 152 in it, which is this one. So on the far right, you're going to see that camera icon. That's what you're going to need to click on to view the, the image. So I just right click and open that in a new tab. So there are multiple books per microfilm. So my tip to getting to your book quick is to use the zoom in and zoom out feature and just zoom as far out as you can. So anytime you notice a um, title page, that's each book. So I was looking for book 152 and this one starts, or sorry, 154, and this one starts 153. So that, so I know that this first one is book 153. And I'll just scroll through all these images until I find another one of those title pages. And I know that I'm at book 154. And then once I'm there, I can just click on, click through until I get to page 188. So this is what I find. So this is the deed from Malolo to Pacific Sugar Mill. And I'm just going to read it to you. So it just says, know all men by these presents that Malolo, Wahine, now residing in Hamakua, island of Hawaii, in consideration of $20 to her paid by the Pacific Sugar Mill, a corporation duly created and existing under the laws of the Hawaiian Islands, the receipt whereof is acknowledged, doth hereby grant, bargain, sell, and convey unto the said Pacific Sugar Mill, its representatives, and assigns all of her right, title, and interest in and to the, those certain pieces of land situate in Hamakua aforesaid, and being an undivided interest, listen to this, this is the important, this is the important sentence that we need, undivided interest in those premises described in Royal Patent 930 and Royal Patent 921, as one of the grandchildren of Kukai Kahe patentee, and one of the heirs at law to his estate and interest, being an undivided one eighth share in the lands above mentioned as described of Kukahikahi. So what does this tell me? This means that Malolo is a granddaughter of Kukahikahi. And I also know that <clears throat> there's a one, she has a one eighth share. So that means there's seven other shares to his land, which are probably other heirs to Kukahikahi. So, you always want to view all the records for your ancestor. And I pulled up all of eight, all eight shares of those. So here's another example of another share that I found. This one's from Anna and her husband, uh, Kelly Kelly Helipali to Pacific Sugar Mill. And it basically just says the same thing as Malolo's deed. Um, but if we keep reading, it also says that Kukahikahe is the patentee and is her grandfather of said Ana. 
And then also her interest in the lands as heir to Lilia, her sister, deceased intestate. So um, Anna has two shares to her grandfather's estate. She has hers that she inherited. And she also has her sister Lilia, who has passed away. So she's selling her interest in two pieces of land. So what do we do with this information? We can't just make assumptions. So the easy assumption would be, oh, all of these are siblings, right? But they could also be cousins because they're all grandchildren of Kukahikahe. So my biggest tip is when you are seeing relationships described in deeds is to always do additional research and find evidence of these relationships. So I researched all eight of those heirs to Kukahikahe and I came across um, a probate record for one of those people. So as Cabello. And so he, Cabello has passed away and this is his wife. His wife is making testimony to his estate. And I'm just gonna read it because it gives me so much good information. Um, so it just says that Ellen Cabello is his wife. Um, he died in May, 1895. I was present at his death and funeral. His sister and his brother-in-law knew of his death. They are in court. I was married in 1879 on this island. My husband died in, and I cannot read that because it's cut off, Puohua, maybe, in Hilo. I lived with my husband, husband until his death. I had no children by him. He had not been married before. I don't know if my husband made a will. He didn't have any papers. <clears throat> I made a search. He died without a will. The first of my husband's brothers is Kula, Kalua'i, he is dead. The next is Lydia, dead. The next is Kapela, he is not dead. Then my husband. And next, Holoholo Kulani, he is now in court. Malia, she is here. Mololo, also in court. Kupuohi and Moloka'i, a, a leper. Ka'anoi in Maui, Ana and Waipio. So this confirms that all eight of those heirs were siblings. And um, through different, through more research, Lydia is actually Lilia, which was described in Anna's deed. And I found out also through different records that their father, all these children's father was Pupula Nui. And if you remember, when we looked at um, the claim for um, Kukahikahe, those other names that were listed, Mololo, which was Kukahikahi's wife, and Kapupula Nui, which is Pupula, Pupula Nui, which is uh, Kukahikahi's son and the, and the father of all these children. So always check for additional, do additional research to find additional records to prove out the relationships that are listed in the deeds. Um, let me just show you one more example of a deed. And it's not exactly a deed. It's actually a deed of adoption. So most of the times when we think of Hanai, Hanai, uh, Hanai children, we don't think that records were really created from that, right? But some were recorded in the deed books. And this is an example of my third great grandfather, Palakiko. And he was given to um, Pakala and Napela. And this is the deed. And I just have a short little transcription of what it says. So it should, it says, it shall be known I am Nika. So this is Palakiko's mother, Nika, living in Lahaina, island of Maui. I hereby give my consent to Pakala and Napela to my own son, Palakiko, who was born in May, 1857. And this deed happened in 1859. So he was about three years old, or two, about two years old when he was given to Pakala and Napela. So just be aware that even the deed books don't just have deeds. They also have adoptions. Another type of record that I haven't, I didn't include in this presentation were, were um, work contracts. So my third great grandfather was a Chinese man. He came uh, to the big island and <clears throat> he, and the deed books is actually his work contract. So it just gives, um, uh, what stuff he's supposed to do and how much money they were lending him and the interest rate. And it was just a really interesting document. So just know that the deeds can contain a little bit more than just land being sold. 
So now that we found the deed, what do we do next? Here's a few tips. So my first tip and one of the most important ones is to transcribe every deed you find to extract the most information. There's just something different about um, writing it out. You, your mind kind of processes it more. So you may discover more details. Sometimes when we find the, the record first, we're just so excited that we found something that we just look for those key names and dates, but we don't actually read the whole document as a whole. So transcribing it, um, really makes us think more about what we're looking at. Um, I've also noticed that the deeds uh, to companies such as the Pacific Sugar Mill are usually always written in English, whereas the deeds between natives were written in Hawaiian. Now, there's a few things you can do if you can't read Hawaiian. Um, Google Translate is OK. It's kind of iffy. There's just too much context that it needs that it doesn't understand. But you can kind of get the gist of what what is being said in a deed if you use Google Translate. There's also Hawaiian dictionaries online that you can use to punch in words. Um, but the best way is to have a native speaker translate it for you. That's how you're going to get the most accurate translation of that document. Um, put the transcription of the deed in the person's notes in your database. So what I like to do is when I find a deed on somebody, so I use a family tree program, and I can create a residence fact and I can also create a deed fact, and I'll just put the date of the deed and the place. That, that will lock in my person to a time and place. And then as always, 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 always cite your sources. I can't tell you how many times I've seen in good information on online trees, but there's no source. So how do I know where this information came from? So always cite your sources. Um, another tip I have is to map out where the land is using that royal patent and grant number. So the easiest way to do that is to use Kapuka database. So even if you are finding a deed in the deed books where your ancestor wasn't the original landowner, it always will give that uh, royal patent number. So if you punch in that royal patent number in the Kapuka database, it will show you the location. You just have to know um, if there's more than one parcel, just remember which parcel that your ancestor is buying and make sure to click on that one to view which parcel it is. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I do is I love using spreadsheets and research logs. So I have a ton of Hawaiian research and a ton of deeds. And so I just punch them into a um, Excel sheet so that I can see the information. And I can, uh, once I find the record, I can create a link to it so that I don't have to keep searching the deed books and then um, I also record if I've recorded and cited that into my database. Okay, mahalo for watching today. If you have any questions, um, I will be happy to field those and answer them as best as I can. If at the end of the presentation, um, you, don't, you didn't get your question answered, or if you think of one later, you can find me on Facebook or YouTube just by searching the Hawaiian genealogist or you can send me a email at tylerjamesmccain at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to answer your question. Thank you guys. Thanks, Tyler. Um, do you mind if we read out a few of the questions that we've gotten so no, far? I would be more than happy to answer. Perfect. Um, someone's asking <clears throat> these adoption deeds and work contracts is also up until 1900. Yeah, so at the index for all the records, I th okay, so the index goes to 1917, I believe. But if you want to view the original record, that stops at 1900. So anything after 1900, you have to go through the Bureau of Conveyances to view that original. And always view the original. Always do it. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, next question. Um, how often do you have to cross-reference if names are misspelled? How do you verify documents when names are misspelled due to cursive? Yeah, so um, the names that I've searched have been indexed pretty well, but there have been a few insta instances where um, the name was just transcribed wrong. I would say just play around with it. Look at um, all the other documents that your ancestor is listed in and see how, how they're indexed in those records. Um, on family search, you can't search by role patent number or you have to only search by name. So yeah, just 
just view it, see what kind of other spellings you can come up with and try those and see if anything pops up. Okay, perfect. All righty. Um, on the letter from the sister-in-law that named the eight siblings sharing the land sold to the sugar mill, it mentions that some of them are in court. Um, what does that mean in this context? Yeah, so that was a probate record. So when somebody dies, their estate goes through probate and oftentimes, well, always it has to go through court to so they can determine who the heirs are and what those people are allowed to inherit. So when um, Cavello's wife was in court, she's just testifying to all the, who all the heirs are of her husband. So they were all in court together. That's just why it said that he was in, they were in court. Perfect. Okay. And Tyler, I think there was a question in the chat that I'm trying to find. Oh, where did it go? There's someone who's just asking if you could clarify the difference between the three websites. Yeah. Um, I thought I had it at the end. Okay. So let me scroll through. Sorry if y'all are getting seasick. So you have Ava Konehiki. That website has the translations for the, the testimony. So the witnesses, the two witnesses that were required by the claimant, Ava Konehiki has the translations for those. It does not have the translation for the whole entire file. If you want the entire file that has the translation, Vaihona has that, but you do have to pay for that. It's $32. It has the translations of the royal patents, the testimonies, and the land grants. Family search, they do have the LCA records, but mostly what we were talking about were the deeds. So when that land eventually was sold or inherited, that's what family search has, those deeds. Perfect. Um, someone is asking to get a copy of the presentation. Um, for the person who asked that question in our chat, I believe Kavena dropped in the link to Tyler's YouTube video um, that has the presentation slides on it. Correct, Tyler? You yeah, so it's the a, video? Yeah, my YouTube channel, I only have two videos on it. I'm working on a little bit more, but um, I do have a different version of this. Um, so if you want to see more of a live version of, of me browsing the website, go ahead and go to my YouTube channel. Just type in the Hawaiian genealogist. Um, and I will have, it's a little bit different than this, but it pretty much has the same information in it. Cool. Um, Tyler, this is not a question. This is just a comment I feel like I should read out to you. They said they've used your YouTube tutorials and it's helped them get through um, some major brick walls. Yeah. So they're mahaloing you for that. Yes, of course. Yeah, I've broken through so many, like this was like uh, the light at the end of the tunnel for me when I thought I was at the end of, my Hawaiian research. I when I found out about deeds, I'm like, oh, this is. I need to share this. This people need to be researching these. There's so much good information in them. Perfect. Um, someone's asking if you can share the way your Excel sheet is spread out uh, is set up. Uh, yeah, I don't have a copy of it on this computer, but I'll just go back to my picture. Let me find it. So. Pretty much what I've done is transcribed the index. Um, how about this? I, if you guys go to my Facebook page, I will post a blank um, form for this so that you can use it if you want. But basically I just have transcribed what the index has. And then I've also created a field where I can link to that. So I can copy the link, put it in here so I don't have to keep manually browsing. But I, if you go to my uh, YouTube or my Facebook Facebook page, in a few days I will have a blank template up for you guys to use if you want. Perfect. Um, similar to that question, Tyler, can you go back to your last uh, slide with your email on it, please? Yeah. Let me leave. Yep, I will leave it on there for you. Okay, just my full name at gmail.com. I'm gonna just type it into the chat for everyone real quick. Awesome. Sometimes it's easier to copy it from the chat too. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, everybody should be getting that. Um, Kavena also just posted in the chat, everyone. Um, there is a website now 
with the listing of people who are available to do translations for documents. Um, it's a poeunuhi.net, and that's run by the Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, I believe. Um, so they have a list. I, I believe one of our people logged in tonight actually told me the other day that she used the translators list on this uh, on that website and had really great results. So. Oh, mahalo for that. I did not know about that it, list. Thank you. It's new, Tyler. I think they just launched it um, maybe three months ago. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yeah. And if you Google it, you have to remember what it's called because I've tried to just Google translator list and it doesn't work, guys. Yeah. You got to remember the website, unfortunately. Oh, she's saying she used avayaulu.org and they translated uh, her new PIPA uh, article for free. Awesome. Oh, awesome. Mahalo ka, Puni. Okay, let me check I think we've answered all the questions. Um, let's see. Anybody else got any questions for Tyler? All righty. Um, with that, I'm going to thank everybody for coming tonight. Tyler, I will uh, email you after this is all done. Um, it's so abrupt when we have to hang up yeah. <laughs> and end the <laughs> webinar. Uh, let's see. For those of you that are coming to this for the first time, um, I encourage you, if you enjoyed this uh, particular program, to take some time to fill out the survey when you guys are logging out the exit survey. We use those surveys to um, uh, ask for funds or support or, and all those things. Um, tell us how much you loved it. Tell us what uh, could be improved. We have actually taken people's suggestions before from previous surveys in previous years. So um, we are open to suggestions. There's a bunch of people telling you thank you in the chat right now, Tyler. Mm -hmm. And um, mahalo. I can't say this enough. Kavena and Mitch, I would not be able to do these programs without you. We would not be able to do this without wonderful presenters like Tyler, um, who are sharing their years of knowledge and experience and trials and and getting over roadblocks with everybody so that everyone else has an easier time and don't hit the same roadblocks as him, um, or at least know how to get around them too. So that is super invaluable. Thank you so much, Tyler. Thank you, everybody, for uh, taking time out of your day to join us tonight. Thank you, guys. And then with that, I will um, bid everyone a good evening. Aloha. Aloha.